Hello and welcome back to Hilbert Spaces, the video series where we talk a lot about topics in functional analysis, mostly concerning inner products. And in today's part 5, we will talk about the so-called Jordan von Neumann theorem. In fact, this is exactly the statement from the last video and today we will try to tackle the proof of it. However, before we start with the technical details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, you can use the link in the description to download additional material for the videos. There you can find books, quizzes, PDF versions and other stuff. Ok, then let's immediately start by stating the important theorem we want to prove today. And as already mentioned, this formulation comes directly from part 4 of this series. In short, it just tells us under which condition a norm space is actually an inner product space. And in fact, the key ingredient here is the so called parallelogram law. This is a nice formula that claims something about the squares of a norm. And indeed, if this formula holds for every x and y in the vector space x, then the norm is induced by an inner product. And as you might remember, this simply means that there exists an inner product on the vector space x that coincides with the norm in the following sense. Namely, if we put the same vector x into both arguments of the inner product and take the square root, we get out our original norm of x. Ok, so this is the whole Jordan von Neumann theorem and today we will try to prove it. And for that it's really helpful that we already know how we should define the inner products in the real case and in the complex case. There please recall the polarization identity tells us that this is the only possibility for such an inner product. However, we still have to show that this actually defines an inner product in our case. In other words, it will turn out that the parallelogram law gives us all the properties of an inner product. But I can already tell you, this is not so simple as it might look. And for that reason, I will not write down the full proof, but I will give you all the ideas. And moreover, I will also only consider the real case because the complex case is more or less the same, just with two additional terms. Hence, for the rest of the video, when we write the pointed brackets, we mean this combination for the norm. And now you know, in order to show that this defines an inner product, we have to show three properties. And these you know from the first video of this series, namely, we have the positive definiteness, we need the linearity in the second argument and the symmetry. And now it turns out that the first and the third property are quite easy to show, but the second will make some work. Indeed, I would say, let's immediately write down how we can prove the first and the third statement. To show that the construction is positive definite, we have to put in the same vector x into both components. And this tells us that the first part here has 2x inside the norm and the second part has just the zero vector inside the norm. Hence only the first part remains and there we can pull out the factor 2. So what we get is exactly what we wanted, namely that the square root of the inner product is exactly our norm. So everything fits together but it also shows us that we have the positive definite property here. In particular, this means if we get the output 0 here, then this is only possible for the 0 vector. And with that property 1 is finished and we can quickly talk about property 3. There please note in the real case we don't need a complex conjugation, so we can just exchange the two entries. And then by simply using the definition, we immediately see that it does not matter which element comes first because the norm does not care about the sign involved. Therefore we immediately get the same result again and the symmetry is proven. So you see, as promised, these two properties are more or less clear and you also see that they hold for any norm on the vector space. 
So for these two properties, we don't need the parallelogram law at all. However, this also means that we will definitely need it now to prove the linearity. Therefore, let's put the assumption, the parallelogram law, into a box. Okay, and now before we start with the actual calculation for the linearity, I first want to check what we can do with this assumption. And maybe it's helpful to use some other letters here, so let's take w and z for the vectors. And now obviously the only thing we can do is to use the definition. Hence what we get is the difference of these two norms squared. And now in order to apply the parallelogram law we have to change something because there is no subtraction in the parallelogram law. And one idea for that for example would be to add the missing part artificially. Hence I write plus the norm of w squared minus the norm of w squared as well. So not much changed here, but now you can see we have two parts with an addition sign. And now obviously the idea would be to apply our parallelogram law to each part. Hence in the first part we want to have x plus y and x minus y. So you see we just have a system of two linear equations we want to solve. And solving that is not complicated at all, we can immediately write down what x and y should be. Namely x is just w plus one half z. And on the other hand y is simply given as one half times z. And now even without solving the system explicitly, you can immediately check that these two solutions work. Okay, in addition we want to apply exactly the same idea here for the second part. However there we need two new names, so let's call them x tilde and y tilde and then you see we want the plus sign in the first and the minus sign in the second. And also there you can just solve the system of linear equations and then the solutions should not surprise you. Indeed in the same sense as before you can just check that the solutions work. Okay, by rewriting the formula in this sense, now you see we are allowed to apply the parallelogram law. In fact, we apply the parallelogram formula from the box two times. Hence we have this right hand side here and there. The only difference you see is the subtraction and the tilde in the second part. However, since y tilde and y are exactly the same vector, we see that this one and this part here cancels out. So what remains here is a factor one half and the difference of the norm squared of x with x tilde. And now obviously we can just resubstitute both vectors again. Hence we get w plus one half z and w minus one half z. And this result looks really familiar because it's exactly the definition of our inner product in the first place. In fact, only the factor in front of the second vector changed and the factor in front of the whole inner product. So we get two times inner product w with one half z. Or equivalently we could push the factor one half to the left hand side. Hence our first result reads like we can pull out a factor one half from the second argument of the inner product. So you see this is already a mini step towards linearity. We can already say something about the factor one half. However of course we can repeat the whole argument and do an induction and then we get more factors. Namely we get the result for each power of one half. The only restriction we have is that the power is a natural number. Okay, very well, this is something we can also already put into a box. And then we can finally talk about additivity. This means we want to know what happens when we add two inner products where the first argument is the same. So let's say we have wz plus wz hat. And now additivity would mean that we can push this addition into the second argument. And in order to show that the first step is again to just use the definition of the pointed brackets in this case. You know it's given by the norm and now we have two similar looking terms. 
And now similarly to before, we want to apply the parallelogram law, which means we have to reformulate the whole thing. And please recall, before we had to shift everything by the vector 1 half z. And now with a similar idea, we can combine all the terms here when we use the vector z plus z hat divided by 2. Therefore, to adjust the first entry here, we have w plus z plus z hat divided by 2 plus z minus z hat divided by 2. Indeed, this is the whole idea. We apply this procedure for all of the four terms. And then we can use our parallelogram formula as before. Okay, so I want to use a plus sign here. So you see by introducing a minus sign at this point, we get actually the third term here. And as before, the other two terms have a minus sign in front. Otherwise, there's not a big difference. And just to clarify, here we see this is the fourth term and the other one here was actually the second one from before. And now we have the same idea as before and we could rename the vectors to x and y to see that the parallelogram law is applicable. However, since we have already explained that before, I will be much quicker here. You just have the one vector in the norm squared and the other one. And what we get are exactly four terms again. And moreover, as before, we recognize that two terms will cancel. And obviously that was the sole reason why we chose exactly this decomposition. And moreover, what we get is again the definition of our inner product. You see that because we have the same vector just with different signs in the sum inside the norm squared and then we subtract both of them. Only the factor here is wrong by 2 but you already know that from before. Hence what we get is 2 times the inner product w with z plus z hat divided by 2. And now we can finally use what we have learned before, namely that we can pull out a factor 1 half. This is the last step and then you see the additivity is proven. Which means one part of the linearity is definitely done. In fact, the only thing missing now is to show the homogeneity, which means we can pull out every factor from the second argument. At the moment we are only allowed to pull out one halves, so let's generalize that. And as it turns out, we can immediately find a different factor because we have the additivity already. Obviously the additivity also applies when we have the same vector in the sum. This implies that in the second argument of the inner product we have z plus z. Which means on the right hand side we can write w with 2z. And on the left hand side we have w with z two times. In other words, it's also allowed now to pull in a factor 2. And also here we can just do an induction to show it for all natural numbers. Hence the result is if k is a natural number we can pull it into the second argument. And now the final step is simply to combine this with our star. Then we know that every factor of the form k over 2 to the power n can be pulled in. And this nice formula holds for every natural number k and n. So you see, we can already describe a lot of positive real numbers with this formula. But please note that we also have the homogeneous property for 0 and minus 1. Actually both of these formulas follow immediately from the definition of our inner product. However, you still see that a lot of real numbers are still missing, but the thing is that we can approximate all of them. One can show that with the expression k over 2 to the power n, one can approximate all real numbers. Or more precisely, we have it for all positive real numbers, but as we have already seen, we can just flip that to the negative real number line as well. Of course, one has to formulate that more precisely, and then by using the continuity of the norm, one gets the formula as we want it. Which means our homogeneous property that each lambda from the real number line can be pulled in. And with that we finally have the whole linearity and the proof is finished. And at this point you will believe me 
that all these ideas can be generalized to the complex case as well, one just has to write more. And with that the Jordan von Neumann theorem is proven, which tells us that a normed space is an inner product space if and only if the parallelogram law is satisfied. So you see why this fact is important for the discussion of Hilbert spaces and I would say we continue with this topic in the next video. So I really hope I meet you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.